All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at how to print out a reverse level order traversal of a binary tree. And then we're going to be coding that solution up of this approach in Python. So if you haven't seen the previous video on this channel about level order traversal, I recommend that you watch that first as this is kind of an extension on that idea. So if you've seen that, or if you just want to see how to reverse level order traverse a binary tree, then go ahead and continue watching. So this is a, an example of a binary tree. So we have this tree here. And if we were to consider the reverse level order traversal, this should be reverse level order traversal, then that would be four five. So this is the final level of the tree, moving up to the next to last level, this level here, two, three, and then moving up to the next level since there's no other nodes on the second level here, one. So we have four, five, two, three, and then one. So that is a reverse level order traversal of this particular tree. So again, just to suggest the other video, the level order traversal, it's going to borrow quite a bit from that idea. As we saw in that other video, we used a queue to keep track of when to extract the node and when to print it out. In this reverse level order traversal, we're going to use that queue for the same purpose with a little bit of a tweak. And then also we're going to make use of a stack, which is what is represented here from this vertical uh, data structure. So we're going to follow a very similar approach to what we did before. And I'm just going to step through that approach. And I think the algorithm will become pretty clear how it should be implemented based on that. And then we'll code that up. So just as we did before for regular level order traversal, we start off at the root and then we enqueue the root node into the queue. So we start off by, by adding the root node as the first element of this queue data structure here. So as we proceed, we pull that whatever is in the queue, we just kind of loop through while the queue is not empty. So the queue isn't empty because we just put the roots in there. We take the root out and then we ask, okay, what children does it have? Give me the left and right children of this particular root node. So we see that this node here has two children, two and three. And so what we do then is we just add those to the queue. So you'll notice that we added the uh, three and two in this order instead of two and three. And the reason for that, just to go back up here, we want this reverse level order traversal. If we were to add them in the order two, three, we would get five, four, three, two, one, which is not quite what we want. We want this kind of uh, reverse level order traversal where we're reading from left to right in the tree. So we want to maintain this four, five, two, three, uh, and one, and so on. So what we're doing here in the queue is we're making sure that we add them in kind of process the right node first and then the left node. Whereas before for level order traversal, we process the left node first and then the right one. So that's just kind of a, a key point to mention there. So we've added these two elements to the queue, three, and then in, in back of three, we have two. So we follow this procedure. We'll take three out of the queue. So now we DQ three, the node three out of this queue. And then we ask, give me the left and right children of this particular node. So we see here in the tree, there's no left child, there's no right child for three. So it doesn't have any children. So therefore what we do is we just go ahead and append it onto the stack. So we push it onto the stack. So right now we have one, which was initially added to the stack. And then we have pushed uh, three onto the stack. So let's keep moving on here. So now we have two. So we take two out of the queue and we ask, what are the left and right children of this node from this tree? So we see here in this tree, the left child is four, right child is five. So what we do there is we go ahead and we push two to the stack. So since we pulled that out of the queue, we push it to the stack and then we in queue four and five in the order five, four. So again, we process the right node first and then the left node. So five is before four. And this is what our queue looks like at this particular state. So then we follow the same procedure. We take five out of the queue. So we DQ five and we push it onto the stack and we ask, what are the children of five? So we see here, there's no left child. There's no right child for five. So we don't have to add anything to the queue. So we move on to DQing four and pushing that onto the stack. So we also ask, what are the left and right children of four? Doesn't look like we have any left and right children. So that is pretty much that. So now what we do is we have this stack, we have an empty queue. So the empty queue means that the initial loop has ended. And we have the stack, which you'll notice if you just essentially pop all of the elements off of the stack, you're going to wind up with the reverse level order traversal. So that's indeed what we do. So we end up by just popping 
uh, until the stack is empty, we'll just continually pop off all the elements. So we'll pop off four, five, two, three, one. And at, if we pop off as, as we added them on here, we see that the l reverse level order traversal is four, five, two, three, one. So that's exactly what we wanted to achieve in this case. So that's the way that we're going to approach this problem. I hope the approach is clear. So now we're going to actually code that up in Python and I'll open up a terminal so we can do that. All right, so we're going to carry on from the code that we had from the previous video where we did level order traversal, just regular level order traversal. And this code that we'll be writing in this video and the code from the previous just level order traversal will be on my GitHub and you can download that in the link in the description below. So before we start off by actually implementing the reverse level order traversal, we're going to implement a very quick stack class, much like we did with this queue class here. It's just going to allow us to modify the built-in list functionality that Python provides and modify it so that way we can call functions like push and pop in a way that makes sense for a stack data structure. Uh, you don't need to do this, it's not necessary, but it just makes it a little bit more consistent with what you would expect from a stack. If you want more information on stacks, I have a series of videos on that as well, and I encourage you to check that out. So with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and implement this quite quickly. So I'm gonna say class stack and then object, and so what we're going to have here is the constructor. So the constructor is going to take self and then we're going to define it much in the same way as we did with the queue as just an empty list since that's exactly what we're modifying to arrive at this stack. Okay, so let's see. So the first thing that we can do is we can have a push function. So we'll say def push again self since it's a member of this class and then exactly what we want to push. We'll call that item. And so what we'll do here is we'll say self .items.pend item so whatever we want to push onto the top of this or whatever we want to push on the stack we'll also have a pop function so we'll call that pop and then what we'll do here is we'll say if not self dot is empty we'll have to define this function return self dot items dot pop so we'll return the item that's at the top of the stack and we'll pop that off the stack so let's go ahead and implement that is empty function so we'll say def is empty this will return a boolean depending on whether or not the uh, stack is empty or not. So what we'll do here is we'll return length of self.items equals zero. So if this returns true, the stack is empty. If it returns false, it has something in it. We're going to define, I don't know if we need this, but I'll go ahead and put this in here just in case, the peak function. So this will allow us to view the top of the stack, peak or top. So we'll say if not self dot is empty. So if the stack isn't empty, go ahead and return the, uh, the item at the top of the stack. So that's accessed by accessing the uh, final element in the list. And let's go ahead and add a size and an overridden length function. So we'll say def size uh, of self, that's going to we'll return length of self dot items. And the way that we can do this is we can also say def underscore len. So this will allow us to override the length function. So anytime we say len on an object of type stack, Python will know what we're talking about. So we can say return self dot size. So I think that's pretty much all we want for the stack. So let's go ahead and go down and implement the function for reverse level order traversal. So I'm going to put that right below here. So let's call this reverse level order print. And it will take the same parameters as the level order print took, but it's going to be slightly different. So it's going to start off very similarly to what we had for level order. So I'm just more or less going to kind of talk through and type as I uh, follow what's the same and accentuate what's different. So I'll say if start is none. So this is the same. We need to check if the node that we're given into the function is none. Uh, if it's not, if it's null, then we just want to return. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and define our queue object. So let's go ahead and do that. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and define our stack. So we'll say stack is equal to stack, the class we just defined there. And then we'll start off as we did before as just in queuing the initial uh, element that we got here, the root element that we got, essentially the start, which, which is what we're going to be passing into this function, which will be the root. So then we'll have a traversal string. This pretty much has the same function as it did before in this function up here. It's just going to keep track of the nodes as we encounter them, specifically the value stored at those nodes. And we're just going to concatenate all of those values into one big long string and return that string so it looks like it's formatted in kind of a nice way. So we're going to set that initially equal to an empty string and we're going to have a while loop. So while length of Q is greater than zero, we're going to go through our primary 
algorithm here. So we're going to say node is equal to Q dot DQ. So we're going to get rid of the uh, whatever's at the front of the queue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to append whatever we just took off of the front of the queue. We're going to uh, not append, we're going to push it onto the stack. So we're going to say stack dot push node. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a very similar if check here for the left and right only remember before since we want to maintain that uh, specific reverse level ordering uh, ordering we want to make sure that we process the right node and then the left so we're going to say if node dot right we're going to say q dot in q node dot right and then we're going to do a similar thing for node dot left so if node dot left actually exists if it's not none we're going to say q dot in q node dot left so we're going to do it like that and then at the final part after this while loop we're going to take uh, part in the final part of the algorithm which is once we've populated the stack with all of the values of the nodes that we care about or, or specifically the, the nodes that we care about the stack contains all of the nodes as we have done in this slide here so what we're going to do is we're going to pop off each of the elements of the stack until it's empty and then we're just going to print out the values or specifically we're going to append them onto this traversal string and then we're going to return the traversal string so let's go ahead and do that so while uh, length of stack is greater than zero so while the stack is not empty we'll say node is equal to stack dot pop so we'll pop off whatever is in the top of the stack and then we'll add the value of whatever that node is so we'll say traversal plus equals string of node dot value and then we'll add like a little separator here so we can have little separators between each of the values that each of the nodes store. And then after that, we'll pop everything off of the stack and then we'll return traversal. So let's go ahead and try to run this. So one thing that we need to do in order to do that is we need to add the functionality for our general print tree function up here for reverse level order. So let's go ahead and do that. So else if traversal type if traversal type is equal to reverse level order, then what we're going to do is we're going to return self dot reverse level order print, which is the name of the function we just had. And then we're just going to pass it the root of the tree. So it starts off at the root and then it prints from there. So let's move down to the bottom and then we're going to go ahead and call that function. So we're going to say tree, let's say print tree dot uh, print tree and then we'll specify the traversal that we want to do in this case it is reverse level order so let's go ahead and write that clear the terminal and give this a run so python reverse level order traversal and if we do that we see that we get the proper order in here so four five two three one so that is what we expected so that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Code, as always, will be provided on my GitHub. Link for that will be in the description. And that's it. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.